Happy Hood Rich Radio is the voice of DJ Scream Moran is here. We got a special guest up in the building representing for that Memphis, Tennessee. Don yeah. Tripp is here. Yeah. Thank you, Capo, for finding us Don Tripp, man. I be it's Almost crazy. Definitely. I Shout think we met Capo. before, but I'll be running to all your homies. Yeah. Whether it's Starlito, Starlito's homies. I'm yeah. like, one person that's on the Hood Rich Radio list we haven't got the chance to chop it up with is Don Tripp. And now here you are. I oh, indeed, man. It's a pleasure to be here. Yep, indeed. absolutely. So what's what's Don Tripp been up to of lately, man? Man, right now I'm on a uh, I'm on a tour. Uh it's the one night only tour. Trying to touch as many cities as possible. We got mm. a few other things popping too. Uh I got another project I'm about to drop. I won't name it right now. Mm. Um other than that, man, we just living, taking care of the babies, you know. Mm -hmm. how, how does it feel, um, you know, for you? So people consider you an underground artist, but right, right. you've been consistent. How does it feel to know that you've been consistent for it's been some time now? Like it's you haven't a had a, 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 a dull summer in a minute. I think um, I think the first step for that was me like gauging my own idea of what success was. Because mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I don't know how you know how many listeners are familiar, but of course I had you know my small run when I was signed to a major label. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot from that, even though the situation didn't pan out. Mm. Didn't pan out. It taught me a lot of things that I needed to, you know, that I, I felt like I need. It, taught, it gave me the tools I felt like I needed to be able to be independent. And one of the main things was meeting people directly instead of letting, you know, the manager or, you know, you know they give you like a, uh, uh, like a, uh, I can't remember what they call them. You know, they give you the, the person that run around, set up everything, mm -hmm. they do all the talking for you. Mm -hmm. And I ain't never agreed with, you know, that was like one of the main things about the situation that didn't, you know, that made it not work out mm -hmm. is the fact that I want to be involved. I got to be hands on. Mm -hmm. So that was with everything when it was kind of, you know, when it came to meeting people, when it came to, you know, the, the paperwork that crossed the lawyer's desk. I want you to explain to me what, you know, what and why you're telling me mm -hmm. to or not to, to rock with it. And I think all of that is what helped me. Help me get to the space I'm in, where you know my my idea of success ain't typically what somebody else's idea of how an artist is supposed to be successful. Mm. And you know, I just stuck to it. They say, um, they say if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. Mm -hmm. And I think I think that's just partially true and partially false. Because if you love what you do, then you're gonna work harder for what mm -hmm. you do. And that's just what I do. I just stick to it. So true. what happens now when? Because I'm sure plenty of major labels call and they trying to get you to you yeah know, i mean we get we get now. offers here and there but the situation is just not you know it's, it's not i haven't seen uh an offer that was that was worth me running with i'm not like uh you know anti-record labels or none of that of course you know it's the pro, it pros and cons to both sides of the table i mean being independent everything i do comes out of my pocket mm -hmm. being assigned to a record label everything comes out of my pocket Without me seeing it, so mm -hmm. you know it's a you know it's a difference, but you know you get the fame, you get to you uh, know. say that again. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> say that again. Being independent, that's a quote. Right, being independent, everything comes out of my pocket. Being signed to a major label, everything comes out of my pocket just without me seeing it. And you have to recoup it. Yeah. Crazy. Oh man, to recoup. I was fortunate enough to be. Um, well, I ain't gonna sugarcoat it. I was fortunate enough to learn how to connive while being in the music industry or watching how people played it. Mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough to learn enough to not owe anything when I got out the deal. Mm -hmm. And they spent, you know, they spent quite a penny. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was, that was, you know, that's great. I count Good that as a, as a feat. So how does all that work now if you look to sign other artists? Like, has that all changed your approach for how you deal with I'm not really, uh, I mean, it's going to sound crazy because, you know, we in the money game, you know, the money business. I don't want to sign an artist until I got, you know, like, until I got major label, uh, until I got the resources that they got. Because mm. otherwise, I, right now, if I sign the artist, I would have to depend on their income. Mm. And, you know, that's one of, again, you know, I've been signed to a major, so I've been in that, you know, I know how that feels. I know how it feels when everybody's working to get you to do something, regardless of how you feel about it or how it makes you look. Right. And I don't want to be in that space. I don't want to have that much control over over another person. Okay. Mm -hmm. What are some of the changes? Maybe you know, maybe somewhere down the line, maybe we know. That's real. What are um, some of the changes that you've experienced outside of that? Seeing how you have been in the game for so long. You mean outside of being signed to a major? Yeah. Um, you're not as important anymore. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, 
I say for the most part, you, you get to. Uh, I I I would like to say I've always been like down to earth. I always kept it, you know, realistic. Even when I was signed, I wasn't expecting to go diamond as soon as I record a song. Right. But it taught me that you know, even if I don't have that push, I can still do what I do, and I still have a loyal fan base, and that fan base is you know, it just kept growing, and it also let me know that a lot of the things I was fighting for. I was right about mm. you know it it didn't pan out because you know I, I ain't trying to like you know no like like i said i'm not anti-record label right. no shape form or fashion right. i ain't been signed to enough record labels to speak on all right. record labels. Right. <laughs> right no i get it but Completely. you know trust me I've, I've been there i get it well you know they they think you know when they find a new artist they got a you know they got like molds so you know uh, it worked for these seven people so you're gonna do what those seven people did mm. i'm like man you know i'm nothing like those seven people so, you know, some of the things you want me to do, that ain't me. It ain't mm-hmm. going to happen. Like, you know, one of the main things they wanted me to do was start with, um, I supposed to do the mohawk, the leather vest and no shirt. <laughs> I'm like, man. Where your tattoos? You know, I don't, you know, I come from a different place. I yeah, ain't yeah, no damn yeah. how I rock. Yeah. And that was like, that was, I, I, I've i named that a few times, but that's that was a, uh, we had a, a actual argument over this. Mm. And I'm an in-person kind of person. So a lot of the times, we would clash because everything in the music industry is impersonal. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, if I want to talk to you, I'm going to call you directly and we're going to have a conversation. Mm-hmm. In the music industry, I got to email you mm-hmm. and let you tell me that you've been out of the office for a whole seven <laughs> days. And then you, you'll, you know, you'll send me back a reply, a standard reply. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that used to bother me because I'm like, you know, I, I literally will, you know, I'll see you. We'll have a conversation. And I can't reach you now. Now you're telling me, you know, I got to email you. Like, mm-hmm. We could have just discussed that. What, what do you think it is like when you when you speak of Texas, Houston, when you speak of Memphis, right. when you speak of certain cities, they kind of just get the independent grind. You know what I'm saying? Like we can name plenty of artists from I think, Memphis that are independent or started independent and moving into major situations. Like what, what what's I, what's in the – I mean, trying to figure out what's in the climate there. Like what's in the experience? Those are markets that – the music industry ignores. Mm, so you gotta get yourself. I mean, you, you know, just like any aspect in life, if if it don't come to you, you gotta go and get it. Mm. And in a place like Memphis, if you see so many artists go and do it on their own, mm. and then you look at the people who went and tried to, you know, who went and got the major backing, and it didn't work out. I mean, look at people like uh, like Ball and G. When Ball and G signed with Puffy, they did the same numbers they did when they wasn't with him. Mm-hmm. They felt like they made a move for no reason. Mm. You know, some of the people involved in music are actually, like, I study the game. Some people do, some people don't. But for the most part, you know, if you look at that and you see Ball and G signed with Puffy and that didn't blow like it should have. Mm. Well, you know, in my opinion, you know, I don't know. I'm not right, in the right, building, right. so I can't right. say. But in my opinion, it was supposed to attract more. And then you look at somebody like, Yo Gotti, who wasn't even on the radar at that moment, and look at him now versus where they are. Not to take nothing away from nobody, of course, you know, because I, I love them all to death. Mm-hmm. They ain't where I'm going. I'm just saying, me being the artist who wasn't involved, period. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm just looking at, just, you know, looking at the avenues and seeing how I can play it, which is another thing that helped me when the record deal wasn't panning out. Mm-hmm. I ain't look at it like it was the end of the world. I'm like, you know, all right, you know, this ain't working. I get to try plan B. And then financially, if you look at it, and I think we've learned from Tech Nine as well, he's done some amazing yeah. things independently. Like the split is just different. So let's say oh, you do terribly. two million terribly. on a major. You know, I said terribly different. Terribly mm-hmm. different. Well, you get let's say you do two million on a major. Two that million can on a major be the equivalent of one fifty independent. Yeah, because right. because you mean you got to keep in mind, like even the biggest acts make like sixty cent a unit. Mm-hmm. If I'm gonna make sixty cent a unit and we're gonna go out and do two million records, I ain't even get two million dollars. Mm-hmm. As opposed to, you know, making eight, nine dollars off a unit. Or, well, you know, now it's uh, like nine eight nine. Mm-hmm. You know, you gotta do what you do with your distributor, but other than that, you know, you get to eat. You don't gotta sell but maybe a hundred thousand copies and you got what somebody would have made if they sold four million records. Mm-hmm. You have merchandise and yeah. other ways that you right. hustle. Well for some people again, we're not anti labels. Right, of they course. Can make of course. You I mean, they turn you into a Drake. Superstar. There's right, no exactly. way you're going to turn that down. <laughs> right. if, if I mean, you know, that's the thing about it, though. Ain't no way to see it. Yeah. It's just play out how it play out. And for me, the 
the greatest thing I've learned is everything they tell you. You say I can. I say well, I can. Everything they tell you before you sign on dotted line is bullshit. It's courting. Right. <laughs> it's all you. bullshit. Yeah. That's how, you know, that's how I looked at it mm-hmm. from the jump. And I think that's what helped me. Like I said, you know, I stayed down. I kept it realistic no matter what. They mm-hmm. promised all kinds of shit. Mm-hmm. And if I would have took everything they promised me, independence would have, I mean, it would be impossible for me to go independent because mm-hmm. I would have owed, I would have owed more than I ever made in my life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the things, the things they was promising, they was promising it like, you know, you can tell that they're used to putting it in front of people who don't have nothing. I was in the same predicament. I ain't, you know, I ain't have no lem- They was trying to give me a Lamborghini, this, a mansion. I'm like, man, I don't of, got none of that. That's nine out of ten record deals. They right. Ten, and I would have signed immediately if, you know, if I went, you know, if I ain't had my head screwed on. And all I'm thinking is, all right, if you're going to give me a Lamborghini and a mansion, what I owe you? Because you ain't just going to do that because I ain't going to do that. I'm not giving you a car. Right. Let alone a Lamborghini. Right. So I'm like, man, you know, the, and you know, I just peeped the day was kind of, more so, like, you know, they playing team ball. This guy hanging around me, and he studied the kind of stuff I like, was what I say. Mm-hmm. And you as boss, he turned around, and, you know, when I meet you in you know, in two days from now, you're going to start talking about the stuff I like. And I'm going to be like, oh, man, they're interested. And in real life, he's doing his job, and he running, you know, it's a play. Yeah. And, you know, I, I had to look at it like that to understand and to not take it, um, to not take it personal. Even though I took a lot of this shit personal. I had to understand that, the, you know, it's not, like I just said, I'm in a space to not say, don't ever sign a record deal. Right. That would be the dumbest yeah. thing to well, say. I think to every anybody. person and every brand and every artist is, some people, I sell some artists, bro, you lazy, you need a deal. Yeah. You know I mean, it's just, it's like, you, sometimes it's how it goes. Independent is real work. Like, yeah, you, you, that yeah. means you're your own A&R, you, yeah. you, you have a management team, you have some people, you to yeah. an extent your own publicist, you got to do it all yourself. It's so. your fault. But There's that's a, one of the things that, that, I enjoy it. I, it might sound crazy, but I don't like blaming people. So even with the record deal, like right now, I didn't, you know, I didn't say so and so did this wrong or so and so that. Mm-hmm. I feel like no matter what, it's my fault. I signed the paperwork. Whatever sure. happened, I allowed it to happen, or you know, I wasn't aware. If I wasn't aware, you can't charge it to nobody else. The same, right. if, you know, if you go out and you playing basketball, you're not gonna play less basketball because the person you playing don't much know how to play. Mm-hmm. If you don't know how to play, you shouldn't have came out here. Mm-hmm. So that's how I look at it. And now with it being, you know, with me being independent, I'm the only one I get to blame. That's perfect because if I'm the only one I blame, then I know that, you know, I'm the one that got to straighten it out. If, you know, if it go haywire, I got to figure out a solution. If I can't figure out a solution, then I got to be humble enough to, uh, you know, to seek assistance. And I ain't really been too good at that, but you know, I'm not familiar. I'm not sure who all is familiar with DJ Logan Gary, but man, he's a great, he's a great help. I I don't want to call him assistants because he's definitely not. He, you know, he really partner. hold weight. Partner. So yeah, yeah. of course, of course, that's that's a, a, a great way to or my uh, my teammate. Mm-hmm. So yeah, of course. So when we let everybody know you was coming here, you probably get tired of this question, but we gotta ask the question. When do Don Trip and Starlito get busy again? That's, <laughs> that's the that's that, that brothers was just for life. Ninety percent of the question. Uh, we're working on it. Um, for the most part, you know, I'm you know, my honest person is with this. Craig just got introduced to fatherhood. I'm you know, I'm seven kids in, mm. so I know how to. Well, you know, all I got five biological children, and what they they call them. Um, Two. Step kids? No, I I, I wouldn't dare call them step kids because they're not step kids. They're my additional adopted? children. No, you're they're not adopted. You're their godparents. You're their godparents. No, my my woman, the woman I'm with right now, had a child before I okay. got with her, and one of the children comes from a previous right. relationship. Well, previous baby mom. I don't know how you. That's it's tricky. You got seven Either kids. way, that's right. you know he, I've been in his life since he was like four or five. And whether I'm his dad or his mama's got a new whatever, they got nothing to do with our relationship. That's my son, no matter what. And yeah, he got a father, but that ain't that's you know whole nother conversation. Mm. But you know, like I said, I well, well, like I was saying, I've been you know I've been juggling being a parent, being a father, and being an artist, and you know see all that is separate. But you know I've been juggling doing both for a long time, so I found the the you know I found how to make it work for myself. And he's new to it. Not saying that he don't know how to make it work, but that's a learning process. That's not something, you know, especially when you're on your first child. You know, if for every person, your first child is the 
that's when it's the most difficult because you don't know what the hell you're doing. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, that's one of the things I respect that that he got. You know, he he handling it well. But I don't press him. I don't, you know, I don't hit him, hey, man, that's, we, it's time to get in the studio. You know, you got to be a father. That's because, to me, that's more important than everything we're doing. If you're not doing that, I would look at him different. And, you know, all the value and respect and the admiration I have for Lito, that adds to it, the fact that, you know, he, he values being a father. And I can't Straight respect up. you if you don't. So to see him do that, of course we're working on Step Brothers. We work a lot even when we ain't putting it all on one tape. Mm. So that's nothing. You know, we see each other, you know. It's a it's a true bond. That's like my brother for real. Mm-hmm. So as far as the you know Step Brothers uh, for Life project, we're working on it. But you know at the same token, we, you know he got to get in the space where he got the room to work. Mm-hmm. So you know it's on the way though. We're definitely doing it. It okay. would it would make no sense not to do it. Okay, don't Dr. Dre detox. Uh, oh no 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 no. <laughs> well see I you know, I actually um this has got nothing to do with nothing. I actually wrote a uh, record for. One of the versions of the detox, right? It didn't, right. One of the it versions. didn't come out, so I didn't get yeah. the check for it. But yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. it exists. Yeah, the, you're right, right, exists, right, yeah. right. You know, that's a. You know, Who knows? You might wake up one day and I'd be ill as yeah. long as you know they right, holler my. Right. Now they got holler my people to yeah. clear that. <laughs> but you right. know, indeed. Yeah, absolutely, man. Let everybody know what you got coming up for the rest of the year and moving into 2020. Before, um, like I said, I got another. Pro- I don't want you know. I don't want to get a name away. I. T- I'm kind of iffy with, my, with the names of the projects. Mm-hmm. After you record about five or six songs, that's really when you find your direction of where you're going. Mm-hmm. So it could be named something now and something totally different later on. But I'm going to drop something in December um, next year. I'm going to just go nuts. Uh, we got the tour, like I said, the One Night Only tour. Shout out to Capo from Concrete. We helped, you know, help getting smoke. that together. Yeah. Uh, for the most part, man, everything I got going on, you can you know you can find on my on my Instagram. I'm you know I'm trying to be a more uh, active social media. media your, r- 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 we all are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you know, uh, you know my uh, Instagram, my Twitter, and my what is it? Facebook. My, all of it, Mr. Dunn Trip, M R D O N T R I P. And I know a lot of artists and, and entertainers have uh, people that do that for them. I don't make enough money to be paying somebody to be <laughs> playing on my Instagram. Right. So it's me. So, you know, keep that in mind when you say certain things that it's me. Right. So, you and know, you when I respond like me, you know, I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> right. don't be surprised. You you yeah. know, you you can't, you know, come in correct and I had to check you. Before All we right. ride out, the Memphis Grizzlies NBA record this year. Just throw it out there. There's 82 games. Just throw out a record. Um, I'm going to be politically correct. Just go around. <laughs> They going eighty two and zero. Hey, All right, that is. good luck. Right, yeah. Warriors ain't even do that. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> not no, the really, I'm not a. Um, I ain't too much in this. I'm a. Uh, what's the word? What they call it? Recluse. Okay. I don't really pay much attention to not. Man, I don't know how many kids any of y'all in the room got, but put seven kids. It don't matter how big the place <laughs> is, but put seven kids. Yeah. In, in an environment. Right. You tell me how much of. Anything else you'll be able to do. I got you. Unless it's my with sports. your kids. You know right. about and cartoons. It, yeah, I, I had to watch <laughs> the worst cartoon. Cartoons ain't the same now. They're, what are they? It's and anim, it, anim, anim, what is it like? Uh, it look real. No, it don't look real no more. And for some reason, the kids enjoy that. Oh, really? So it's kind of trippy. Because, mm. you know, I had to, it, it reminds me that I'm older than they are. Much older than they are. Because, mm. like, they got, I don't know who, what you can. We said you can edit it. Like they got new Ninja Turtles, and and it looked horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and you know when I seen, it, I was like, "What? What? I mean, the Lion King was horrible." Right. But no, I mean like, no, nah, I mean like this is like they purposeful like they purposefully drawing the the mm. the cartoons to look like whoever drew it can't draw. Mm. And you know we come from. Are they still drawing and not using computers? No, nah, I, mean, I just mean yeah, you know the, okay, the illustration looked like whoever designed it was yeah. just. Russian, they just yeah, here you go, and they go wow. four turtles, and you like, what is this, man? It's like they box, they, man. Look, you had to see that, and when you see, it, it's, you know, it disturbed me. But my kids like, w- w- what? What you talking about? Right. They don't know that's no difference. Know. So you know that that's a whole nother thing. But like I said, you know, that, it's hard to. I can't go and turn on the Grizzlies, and they trying to watch. Uh, my, like my daughter likes my newborn likes to watch. Uh, the Mickey, uh, whatever, any, any kind of Mickey Mouse, mm-hmm. and she, she's a she's what only four months, 
and she's ha- she has a preference. If we try put on anything else, she's going crazy. So if I put it on the Grizzlies, there ain't no way I'll be able to enjoy that. Enjoy that because you got to handle that. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, they, they run my life when it comes to my entertainment. No doubt, no doubt. Don Tripp, thank you for pulling up the Hood Rich Radio. Make sure you oh, pull indeed. up anytime you mm-hmm. in the A-Town. Salute I to you, my brother. Salute. Will.